The Startup Hour, giving entrepreneurs education, motivation, and inspiration from successful entrepreneurs from all corners of the country. The Startup Hour is a weekly business program bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories, answer your burning business questions, and inform you on best practices. Tune in to the Startup Hour every Tuesday from 9 a.m. Startup Hour in association with Power FM. A very good uh, morning indeed. Uh, welcome to the Startup Hour, a program designed to give uh, entrepreneurs, both young and old, education, motivation, and inspiration from entrepreneurs from all corners of the country. The Startup Hour is a weekly business program bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories and inform you on best business practices. I'm Patrick Chifwamba with my co-host. Mwapech Saka. There you go. There you go. This morning, uh, we are talking about harness, harnessing women's natural and creative uh, skills with Tawani Clark. Yes. Uh, today's guest, Tawani Clark, is founder of Kutowa, an Afro-chic uh, clothes and accessory design label, and uh, Kututa Yoga. As an undergraduate student, she studied agriculture, working in the sector before deciding to do an MBA to help pave the way to becoming an entrepreneur. After a couple of years in consultancy in the agricultural donor sector, Tawani had uh, a four-year stint in uh, helping manage uh, Corpus Globe, a leading uh, law firm. And after hitting uh, the glass ceiling, she mm. realized that she still was not doing what she wanted. And in 2009, took the plunge to start Kutoa and Kututa Yoga. Kutoa now employs 10 people, and is a well-known and leading design house. Kutoa has showcased locally at the Zambia Fashion uh, Week, regionally at uh, Swahili Fashion Week in uh, Tanzania, Kala in uh, Desert in Botswana, and at the prestigious FEMA in Niger. Tawani also represented Zambia in the Origin Africa competition and locally won Most Creative Designer Award. In 2015, Tawani won third prize in the Nyamuka, Zambia's business plan competition to expand Kutoa. Kututa Yoga has grown with Tawani currently teaching 13 yoga classes a week over three locations in Lusaka and teaching an average of 100 different people a month. Tawani, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. It's lovely to be here. We are indeed pleased to have you here. Oh, Masai has to say namaste. Namaste. Tawani. Namaste. Tawani, uh, we're happy to have you here and uh, talk about your uh, entrepreneurial journey and uh, to the larger issue of uh, business and indeed that in that I mean the textile business in Africa. First of all, uh, what is it like having an influential father like Roy Clark for, dog, for dad? Oh my gosh, growing up, did you what, remember Bill Cosby? Remember the show? Yeah. Bill yeah. Cosby? Well, yeah, we certainly do. <laughs> yeah, well, well, forget about now. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> what it was then, it was like growing up in Bill Cosby times too. It was hilarious a lot of the time, yeah. He's, he's, he's actually a funny man. He's a funny man, and he's, you know, he was, he's a great father in the sense that he's one of those people who's still very much connected to the child in him, so... Uh -huh. Because of that, he relates to children very much. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, we would be skipping down Cairo Road. He would have me on one hand, and my sister would be in the other hand, and then we would be skipping down, singing a song, skippity-doo, <laughs> skippity-doo, <laughs> down Cairo Road. I mean, that gives you some yeah, indication. Yeah, we, we, get, <laughs> we get the picture. And, uh, uh, the reason I ask if he's a funny man, obviously because he's into a lot of uh, satire, political satire, and uh, people often don't see the humorous side of what he's trying to relate. His humor is what very was, was, serious. Yeah. His humor is very serious. There's always a message, and I think that's something that we also realize at a family. I mean, he'd crack a joke, but there's uh, a lot of the time there's a message in that, in that joke. And he's a storyteller. He loves to tell stories, I think, and... Mm -hmm. That was another really fun aspect of uh, my childhood was dad reading us stories, bedtime stories. And I remember some, you know, years later would pick up the book and we're like, would read the book. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't remember it being this boring. <laughs> uh -huh. He used to make up half of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the story that yes, you read to me. The, he used to make it up as a go, which is really good because even when you read it again, it would be different. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, That's true. But uh, we want to know about your story. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, growing up, like you said, running, uh, you know, uh, skipping down Cairo Road. Tell us a bit about your story. What what, what made you, uh, what was your journey like for you to come to where you are today as an entrepreneur, having, you know, studied agriculture, having done an MBA, and then to say, nope, 
this is not me I want to do this which is a uh, uh, more uh, about using your creative mind it's a long journey in my case it was a very long journey I think by the time we're leaving school some people kind of know from childhood from early on I want to be this mm -hmm. and they stick with that but I think for the majority of us we're not like that we we discover ourselves as we go along and I think for young people what we need to give them is a range of possibilities I think a lot of us grew up, and still now, we grew up in a, in a, in a time where certain professions are acceptable yeah. and other professions are not acceptable. You know, you're like, okay, I'm a, I'm a radio DJ, you know, like people like... You know, mm, really? Yeah, really, <laughs> isn't there anything else that you could do? Um, so, you know, it's like, okay, tell me you're going to be a lawyer. Tell me you're going to be a doctor. Tell me mm -hmm. you're going to be an entrepreneur. You know, don't tell me I'm going to be a singer. Don't tell me you're going to be an, a painter. Don't tell me you're going to be a fashion designer. There are certain professions which were not seen serious. So I think what that does to you is ev you have blinkers. We grow up with blinkers, thinking that certain professions are not even on our radar screen. Mm -hmm. We feel that we can do this and we can do that. Even I was very fortunate in the sense that I didn't come. I came from a very liberal, very open family. My parents were quite categorical from the word go in terms of like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. you know, we'll support you in whatever you want to do. But then I was in the society where you know certain ex um, professions are acceptable mm -hmm. and certain are not. So I know, looking back, mm -hmm. I always had a really creative side and I always had an entrepreneurial side. My, my grandmother, dad's mom was... Um, shopkeeper so there was entrepreneurship in that side of the, mm -hmm. of the family mm -hmm. and I think even a lot of Zambian and African families we survive because of the tundemba mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. someone is you know uh, making and selling the tumboas that's mm -hmm. all entrepreneurship and back in the day it was even pimiso <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> to my Pamela and all those things break it down okay. so we you know it, it was there and I was very artist quite artistic at school but then I didn't pursue art at school because, you know, there was other subjects. Well, because I was not musical, so music and art went together. So I figured that um, I would do typing and office practice. So basically, I didn't nurture the creative side of me um, the whole of secondary school. I think the creative side kind of had a gap mm -hmm. there. And although I wanted to study architecture, which again I looking back would have expressed the creative side of me uh -huh. what happened is when I was leaving um, St. Mary's um, mm -hmm. school in, in Woodlands Lusaka was that the Copper Belt University was closed and uh -huh. that's where architecture was and then we have this career teacher who says no you know it's easier to get into university if you apply for agriculture uh -huh. so this mm -hmm. is a girl who's the top of her class, but doesn't have the confidence. We were talking about yeah. um, mm -hmm. the solar plexus chakra, the, the confidence. Yeah, you know, I was the top of my class, but I still wasn't confident. What if I don't get good grades in this? Mm -hmm. You know what? Just in case, let me put first choice agriculture, mm -hmm. and then second choice engineering. So um, then, then I'll get into agriculture, and then I'll shift into engineering so I'll do civil engineering so civil engineering was the compromise I said okay at least I'm dealing with buildings I don't want to wait mm -hmm. a year and hell no who knows two years we don't know when that university is going to open again true Hop about university so that's how I applied to agriculture mm -hmm. and in agriculture that's in first year again I was like oh my gosh this math you know the math lecturer just used to come this Indian woman, she's just, you know, the huge, I don't know if you've been to LT1 or 2, it's huge. Uh -huh. This is a little Indian woman used to come in, draw some funny things on the blackboard, yeah. talk about them, and leave. And like, what the flip is going on here? <laughs> 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 okay, what's that, like <laughs> what? diagrams? and? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, am I ever going to figure this out? But you know what, guess what? I did figure it out. I found an amazing tutor, and I figured it out, and I did really well in math. But again, because of the lack of confidence that maybe I won't figure this out, I I stuck in agriculture. I didn't make that change, and I you know I compromised, and I think oh well, I'm sure you know we've got lots of land. I yeah, can do yeah. this. Yeah. I loved biology. Mm -hmm. I love you know nutrition, and that's how I find myself in um, agriculture. Okay, I, I want to take you back just quickly. Uh, you were top of your class in, in high school. Uh, how was it? Other than it being a, 
a really fun time growing up. How was it? How your educational background was that instilled to you uh, by your father? You know, I understand he was a lecturer at some point. Both my parents okay. were teachers. Okay. Both my parents um, were teachers when mm-hmm. I was born. Both of them. Mm-hmm. My mum was a teacher at Kablonga Girls. Okay. My dad was a teacher at Monali Boys and then went on to the Curriculum Development Center. So I was raised raised by teachers. Mm-hmm. And but I hated school, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> eh? I hated school with a passion. Wow. You know, I hated school so much that I was sick every <laughs> single term without fail. Uh-huh. And I was like I was like, Oh I'm sick. Oh god, I don't need to go to school. You know, to the extent that in my last year I was I think I there's one term I only actually attended half the term because I had hepatitis, which is the reason that I became a vegetarian. Okay. Oh. So but my my dad helped me. He has a lot of patience. I wished that all my teachers were like my dad because it was so much fun when I didn't when I didn't understand any, something, I could go to dad, whether it was English or okay, except for geography. Geography he was flummoxed. Then I <laughs> then I'd have to go to mom. <laughs> Geography, I had to go for mum, but for English, math, and the sciences, and I love the sciences. And as teachers, dad really, um, he he cultivated. You know what teachers uh-huh. do? They see an interest, and he didn't shove anything down me. Uh-huh. But he saw the interest. He said, oh, she's interested in biology, and guess what? I got a I got a microscope. Uh-huh. For Christmas, uh-huh. what? You know? yeah, uh-huh. and then because my dad and, and mom were then working at University of Zambia, then I didn't know what to do with it. Uh-huh. And then I, you know, he arranged with some of his friends in the biology, you know, department. So then they told me how to do all the peeling of the onion seeds. So you know, the stuff that we were doing in secondary school, uh-huh. peeling of onions, like, and mm-hmm. I did that in primary school by myself for fun. <laughs> 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 and then when I was interested in astronomy and how the universe started um i got a i got a telescope and i got all these books so i was t- you know I was studying about the big bang and how the universe started in my early secondary which we didn't even cover that in physics which is such a pity because it's such a cool topic mm-hmm. and you know i was following Halley's comet i was looking for jupiter i used to wake my sister up at two in the morning mm-hmm. say you know, she's just a good sister. She never used to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> she, she just wake up. You know, wake up. So Hell is comet is passing. Yeah, no. There's going to be a, um, a meteorite shower out of the constellation of Gemini. So, you know, let's be out. So and then if my mom up. knew <laughs> we were outside in the garden at 2 a.m. <laughs> looking for meteorite shower, she would have freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, I wanted to know, um, you're a Buddhist, right? That's right. Um uh, from the start, like, you, were your parents uh, Christian, and uh, how did you take up Buddhism? It's 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 kind of linked to the the story that I was talking about, the love of science and uh-huh. astronomy. Again, I grew up in an unusual family in the sense that no one in my house went to church. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. My dad is pretty much agnostic. That's the best way to describe him. <laughs> my mom, I think, believes, but being a very busy working mom who was a feminist, her weekends were for women's activities. Uh-huh. So she's probably busy right now on the Women's Day march there uh-huh. on the podium. I remember last year when the Buddhist organization marched, I was waving to <laughs> <laughs> mom was one of the people. <laughs> one of the people um, there. So what happened was only my grandma would go to church. Mm. And I would have gone with her if the service she was attending wasn't like the Chichewa service. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would have probably tagged along. The fun thing for me as a child was to spend the night at a family's house, the Maliks, yeah. to spend the night at the Maliks. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get to go to church. This is so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> and I was like, oh, then people were going in front, and they were, you know, receiving Holy Communion. I didn't know what the hell it was. It's just like, those guys are eating something. I want some of what <laughs> they've got. I want some <laughs> so of I lined up and then sat back, and then my, my friend said, Tony, are you confirmed? I'm like, yeah, no, finish it. No, what is <laughs> confirmed? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, I I'm not confirmed. I don't know what this thing is. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I may die. So I was very naive. I, I had a passion. I had two passions. One passion was for science, uh-huh. but I had a passion for philosophy and a passion for spirituality. So, oh. you know, everyone, I used to read the Bible like it was the best storybook. It was the bestseller. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the way I used to read. I mean, you know, Deuteronomy, like the first four, five, the whole of the New Testament, not the whole, the, all the Gospels. Mm. I used to read it like, you know, and Jesus was like my fan. Mm. I mm. love the example of the life of of Jesus, and 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 I still do. I think he's an amazing example. If we could live more like him, the world would be such a better place. But I had a big conflict going on. I had a big conflict between my scientific interest mm-hmm. and principles and the Christian faith as we know it um, today. Mm-hmm. So it's like I had one foot on the path of science and one foot on the path of religion. And the only religion that I knew was the only one that I came across, which was which was Christianity. Mm-hmm. And then the more and more I read, I found that a lot of the um, first scientists were persecuted by the church for their beliefs because people felt that they were going against Christianity. Mm-hmm. And I felt that um, I couldn't follow a religion that wasn't scientific for me. I mean, I respect everyone's religion. Mm-hmm. Everyone should follow what they feel is right for them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll never, you know, diss anybody's religion. But for me, it didn't. It didn't make sense. There was too many contradictions. So I took my and and the paths were going further and further apart. So I took my foot off the religious path and just said, look, you know, at least in in in, in science, e- they can prove, they can validate mm-hmm. what they're saying. And I gave up on religion, so from the age of 12. From okay. the age of 12. 12 is a very special age. Even you see in the life of, of Jesus and the life of um, Nichiren, the branch of Buddhism I, f- I follow, special things happen at the age of 12. Mm. It's the end of the solar plexus chakra and the beginning of the heart chakra. Ah. <laughs> it's getting deep. Yeah, so that's when um, I gave up. And then it was when I was 17 that I stumbled across Buddhism. And mm-hmm. I was just so amazed that there's this philosophy, religion, that is runs parallel to science. And it's like all the unanswered questions were very clearly answered. And that's when I came into into the philosophy of Buddhism, the Nichiren Daishonin philosophy, because there's many, many branches of Buddhism. You know, if you think Christianity has many different um, mm. denominations, uh-huh. try Buddhism, it's uh-huh. even wider. Some of the sects of Buddhism are actually closer to Christianity uh-huh. than they are to the sect of Buddhism. But basically what the sect is, is this the, the, the teaching that I follow says is, we have the power within us, or you could say God is within us. This is what Namaste also means, yeah. although Namaste is not Buddhist. It's just the way people greet each other yeah. in, in India. It's like hi yeah. Yeah. or hello, but it's deeply respectful. People press their palms together, and you know it's like heartfelt. Show your hands and your heart, and then you bow, and you say Namaste. So basically you're saying is I bow to the divine in you that is also in me. Uh-huh. It's like I'm seeing God in you. Mm-hmm. It's 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 beautiful. So that's how I I, I became a, a, a Buddhist, and I do a lot of meditation. So I'm doing my chanting meditation maybe for an hour a day, and it's helped me through all the ups and downs. And it gave me the courage to actually start these two businesses, Kutoa and um, Kututa. Kututa Yoga, because as part of the Buddhist um, tradition. We write New Year resolutions, but it's a different type of writing New Year resolution. It took me many, many years to kind of get into it. The spirit with which we write New Year resolutions, it's not like, yeah, okay, what should I be doing? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I need a car. Yeah, I need maybe. A house. Yeah, I need a house. Maybe I should lose weight. You know, yeah, I think yeah. in time I do, I, I, do, I do that. The spirit is, what do I want to do? Like from the depth of my heart, you know, what do I want to do? And it's like. And sometimes when you think of what you want to do, then you 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 it's the, the should, so you you get the should it gets in the way, and then there's another thing, could or can. Uh-huh. Again, it's possibility. Uh-huh. I want to do this, but is it possible? Can uh-huh. I do it? So that's the other block. Uh-huh. So the spirit behind the the New Year resolutions is, what do you want from the bottom of the depth of your heart? Secondly, what would you do if you had a fairy godmother who could wave her wand? Any wish. Any it, wish. It, interestingly, uh, there is no can't in what you're saying. We yes. had a guest not too long ago who says, uh, when you want to start a business, the first thing you need to eliminate out of your mind is, I can't do this. I, I can't do this because of that. You were saying, uh, 
what could I do or what can I do? There's no negativity in, in your thinking process. Yes. And there's always, we think of what we can't do, but we sometimes, I, I remember going through that stage as well as a farm. We thought, okay, we you can't do this, you can't do If you focus on the can'ts, mm-hmm. you feel very caged. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't do this, I can't do that. But when you start thinking of the can, it opens you up. I can do this. And then when you get to that one, can, and then I could also do this. And then I could I also, do, also this. do this. So can is opening and liberating, whereas can't mm-hmm. is quite caging. It's like roadblocks. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. Cage, 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 cage. But can, you find that crack, and then you open it up. This man was actually a student of your dad's, by the way. The man that said this. <laughs> he was at uh, Munali. Yeah, correct. And he was taught by Roy Clark. Yeah, he, he was. His his students never forget him. Partly because I think he was known to stand on the table sometimes <laughs> while he teaching. Did that. I don't know why he did that, but they remember that. I, I, want, I want to fast forward quickly to uh, how, how was it? <laughs> you, you you went and studied <laughs> agriculture, mm-hmm. and then and then did an MBA, mm-hmm. and then and then called it quits. Yeah, and and yes, but it started with that New Year resolution because uh-huh. when I was thinking of what do I want to do, I. I what came up is this design label. I said, I want to I wanna start a design label. I want to start couture. This is while you were working? This is while I was working. Okay. This is while I was working. This is like, it's funny. It's actually 10 years to this to this year. So this oh. is 2006. Uh-huh. I'm writing this New Year resolution and saying, no, I'd like to start couture design. No freaking idea on how it's going to happen. But I told you, that's not the point. Yeah. The point is to put down what you want to do. Even if you don't know the steps and what's going to happen Mm -hmm. and then I'm still working and then 2008 two years later is when I hit this glass ceiling and I realize as much as I love the job as much as I love the people and creativity is also everywhere by the way there's a lot of creativity in every job everything that you do because we're talking about harnessing creativity Mm -hmm. when you have a problem a solution you need to exercise your creativity to find solutions to problems to make the situation you know whatever situation whether it's work or home and I enjoyed doing that so I, I, I designed a billing system which they used for for several years now I think they've gone into a proper a better commercially one but that's that's at the law firm now that's at the law firm right. and you know we were always doing something and my boss um, Elias Chupimo Jr. Mm-hmm. was a visionary you know mm-hmm. he would challenge me so much do I need to do that I'm like what, what? Like- me? But the, <laughs> do what? What is it? And then I would go into it and I would s- understand the the vision and see what what he meant. Like we in, in we installed a document management system, which mm-hmm. I think was pretty much a first there. I didn't even know what a document management system was, mm-hmm. and he wanted to put one mm-hmm. there. So he he had that vision. But then I sat down. I remember having realizing that you know, and it was another time like this too. Remember, two thousand and eight was another another global yeah, crash, right, right, just recession. After, yeah. So pretty much similar time that we are now. And despite this, they were not saying that your job is not here. We just say we can't give you a higher position. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't a lawyer. So if I was a lawyer, maybe I could have come, become one of the partners, mm-hmm. but I wasn't. And I remember going home in tears that day. And then I s- knelt down in front of my altar and I chanted and chanted and chanted my my mantra, Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. And then I'm like, what's your problem, girl? Is this even what you wanted to do in the first place? Mm-hmm. I admired Elias because he started that law firm from nothing to be one of the most prestigious law firms. I mean, we had a staff of almost 30 people okay. at the time that I was there. I was like, no, I admire what he did because he built his dream. Mm-hmm. And I, it made me reflect, what is my dream? When am I going to have the courage to stand up and start my dream? When is it going to be? a good time. Yes, I had single kids. I was a single I'm a single mom. I have two kids. My kids were in primary school. But I thought I wait for them to be in secondary school. Will it be right then if I wait for them to be in university? Mm-hmm. When or do I wait? Do I put my life on hold until my kids grow up? Do uh-huh. I wait until they finish their masters when they're twenty five uh-huh. or thirty? And then it, it 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 struck home that there's there's never a right time. Uh-huh. You know, the right time is you have to start now in some way or another. I'm not saying that you quit your job, and I didn't just quit that day. I didn't quit my job the next minute. You plan. So I planned. I thought about it. I thought about what I wanted to do. I thought about the steps. That's when the yoga came in. I mm-hmm. realized I also love to teach yoga, and I figured that I could do two things. 
I could, you know, start couture and also, you know, and it's about doing what you love because you know when you do, and actually you guys, I can tell you guys enjoy what you're doing. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> and does it feel like we're working here? No. Or, or does we're it feel we're like having conversation. We're having fun. Yep. We're deep in this conversation because this is what we, we're talking about mm-hmm. what we love to do. Yeah. And when it's you work at what you're doing, work becomes play. Uh-huh. So I figured that I love yoga and you know, let me also train to teach yoga. Then I can do what I love two, three times a day with other people who love it. And it's it's like it's like having an addiction. It sounds bad. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like having an addiction and yeah, you can yeah. get a fix several times a day with other people, even like the design world. You know, I go into what I call design warps when I'm with a client and my assistant knows that when it's time for Tawani to go, I have to tell her what time it is because she has no idea. Mm-hmm. You just lose track of time. Space. I'm in a warp. I think I've been there for 15 minutes when I've been there for for one hour. <laughs> Whoa. So, yeah, I planned. So, of course, then I had I had some accrued some savings. So I, I, I got my savings together. I had a plan. I thought about how I, I did it. So I probably worked for another four or five months. Mm-hmm. I also didn't want to, I mean... I had a good relationship. I didn't want to drop them. Uh-huh. I, I wanted to, you know, give notice, put everything in place, uh-huh. hand over to somebody else, you know, leave in a good, and we're still, we're still friends. I, I, I want to ask you, wh- wh- did did you get encouragement from uh, Elash Pimo Jr. as as you explained what, what your next step was? Or was it more, why don't you wait and then maybe, you know, do A, B, C, D, or be in a more... Uh, stable well, situation. They were they, they were genuinely sad to see me go, and I was genuinely sad to go. But I think there was also the respect that you know you you got to do what you got to do, and mm-hmm. uh, and there's time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we did hand over to 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 somebody and groom. And I think in life we got to move. I remember when I worked um, agri- for Agriflora in, in Chisambo, I remember very distinctly one gentleman who came as a consultant from the U- U.S., a lovely guy who was 70 and he used to go jogging. It looked like he was jogging in slow motion <laughs> around the, the firm. But he said something that I'll never forget. He says, look, in whatever job that you are, train your, tr- train your successor. Mm-hmm. Train your successor. Because if you don't train the person that's coming in, you can't go higher. Oh. Yeah. So even like in my job, I, I, I'm, you know, I used, to, when I started Couture, I used to be doing everything. I oh. used to be doing all the scheduling for clients. But now I'm grooming someone. I have someone who does that. That frees me up to do other things, to look up and expand. If you're still trying to do everything, one, you're not developing other people. Uh-huh. And you can't. You start off most businesses in Africa. You might start off as a one-man show, but if you remain a one-woman show, uh-huh. one-person show, then you can't grow. You know, if there's only one person in Power, Power FM, uh-huh. you know, in Power, then then how do you grow? As the station grows, the number of people grows, and the specialized roles uh-huh. go ahead. So let's all be training. Uh-huh. successors uh-huh. and find mentors and other people to train us to also take to ourselves to, to a higher level. Okay, now so you, 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 you left the law firm and took a plunge, mm-hmm. as it were. H- how did you come up with uh, the name, first of all, of Kutoa? W- were you chanting and in that moment? Yeah, a lot of creativity sparks in those moments of, of you know, meditation. But, um, I'm a two-way hybrid. Let's 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 borrow from agriculture. I'm a two-way hybrid. So, um, on my dad's side, there's an Irish and English uh-huh. mix. So, where there's Irish, there's always a hint of madness. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. it appears so. Yeah, <laughs> so what it is with those people. They're like Africans, they're very African. <laughs> and then on mum's side, uh, there's an Ingoni and Tumbuka. Wow. Mix. Yeah. So, Manawakwitu. Mm. You know, so um, the naming any of you if you're from the east you know naming as in Africans let's just say in Africa names are very very significant I think they were everywhere in the world but they remain so here name is very very important and whereas the Bembas Bembas I'm sure most you know traditionally 
we believed in reincarnation and this is why the members they named Wachilufia. You find Chilufia keeps coming back. Hey, hey, mm. 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 You <laughs> named the baby Mwana. Uh, My brother <laughs> there. Yeah. Ah, it's wild. Mwa wana mwape. Hey, yeah, you're it. named after somebody Mwapo. So maybe they tried to give you Chilufia. Mwana, mwana ngolira. Man, this child is still crying. Ah, ah, dead Chilufia. This is not Chilufia. Let's try Mwape. They gave you Mwape, you stopped crying. <laughs> ah, wawera Mwape yeah. has come back. So that is what happens in the north. In the east, it's a story. Every name has a story. A story of a situation. What happened at the time of the birth of, of, of this child. That's mm-hmm. where you find Mafuto, Susio, Temuani. Mm-hmm. You know, depending upon, according to the situation. So our names are stories. And they are totally unapologetic. Indeed. <laughs> 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 this is what it is. It's very <laughs> frank. And so you Mavuto, if someone is ma- named Mavuto, we had a partner vote that one day after a meeting with Mavuto, just tell me what happened. <laughs> <laughs> What's <laughs> the story? The, the, <laughs> you always will get the story. So the story, so Kutoa, because it's the story behind me, it's the story of who I am in a way. When my parents were getting married, uh, you know, on the Zambian side, it's like, ah, anyway, we have just, we have got independence and yeah. now you want to go and marry a white man. Mm-hmm. And then, to make matters worse, somebody worked in the bank and they had access to my bank details. Uh-huh. Talk about client inf- mm, you know, privilege. Priv- <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, and you choose one who's broke, please. <laughs> so if you're going to marry a white man, you choose one who's got some. Who's got more. Yeah. And then on the on the English Irish side, it was like, ah, you know, it was bad enough you went to Africa. It wasn't said. It's like, no, you should marry an African. You mean you should stay there? It means like, you are not coming home. So when my dad said, I'm getting married, it's like how easy. The, the first the response was, how easy it is, is it to get a divorce? <laughs> 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 and then one thing both sides agreed on, both the Zambian side and, and the English side is, ha, huh, Nangavana, what about the children? They'll be gone for yours. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm a bit confused, but that's okay. Um, so my my mom's mom, Agogo, the yeah. one, the only one who used to go to church in the house when yeah, she was, yeah. was was visiting, an amazing woman who lived to 103. She's my wow. role model. That's why I say I want to live to 100 because I think of Agogo. I'm like yeah, I can do this, and she was amazing. And Agogo was the only one who blessed the marriage, and she was the only one who came for the wedding. Wow. Yeah. So when I was born several years later, she was now ha, huh, it's my chance. So when I was born, just there was already a you know a, a distant cousin, a cousin who was Toela. So probably if Toela wasn't born a year before me, I would have been Toela. So <laughs> I was Toani, and it was her way of saying Kutoa. It yeah. come the root of my name is Kutoa. Kutoa means to be so bright and beautiful. You dazzle. So what she was saying, you see this marriage that you guys didn't want to bless. Yeah. See how beautiful. By the time I was born, of course, everyone was reconciled, and mm-hmm. a child kind of just sees. You see this. This marriage, see how beautiful it is. Mm. You see the children, see the child. Is she not beautiful? Also, you know, both babies are, are beautiful and, and cute. So that's why I named it Kutoa. And also, it's relevant for me in my job because my job, my Kutoa, the fashion label, is a fusion label. Mm. Just as my parents were, my parents was a fusion mm. marriage. Mm. And it made them strong because they had to stand up. And r- can you imagine how sure you have to be about the person you're going to marry if almost everyone in your family... At the dawn of independence. Yeah. Well, after. Yeah. But, yeah. You can imagine how sure you have to be. So mm-hmm. I think it really helped them consolidate their, their marriage. And they brought in their different aspects of themselves and their cultures and their traditions and their genes in, in, in me. You know, in agriculture, hybrids, when y- the more different the parent lines are, the more di- 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 genetically diverse they are, mm-hmm. the more vigor there is in the offspring, the more diversity, the more new stuff you bring into, in the, offspring. The, into the, the offspring. And that's also what I was bringing in Kotoa, bringing in the Western cuts and aesthetics to a lot of the, the time because we l- all of us, live in a very western world i don't see you're wearing <coughs> very western clothes mm-hmm. and shoes there's mm-hmm. nobody here in it you know there's nobody here the in it <laughs> <laughs> okay i have a boo boo one but yes. you can see it's a, a funky modern boo boo uh-huh. yeah and and that's what i wanted to do to take something about our african vibrant color and aesthetics and fuse it with this western and create something which is dazzling which is beautiful that expresses us as modern but african it expresses us as modern africans 
I, I want to fast forward now. The the name was very well uh, thought through. It has it has a lot of significance. How did you go about developing the the business model for Kotoa? Or, or, sure. or was it was it a very clear and cut? You know, like you said, you brought the Western and the African. Was it clear cut to say I'm going to start like this and this is what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a tailor, then I'm going to go to the shop, or was it another journey altogether? I'm ashamed to say that it's probably not very. I did write a, a, a business plan, maybe more for the yoga side, and I think it was more of an energy. You know, the brand is pretty much an expression. It's an expression, very much of the energy that I probably embody that I think people that not I embody that is out there that mm. an energy of what people want to be mm-hmm. and aspirational so I ascribe to it and I, I felt it and I feel there's a whole body of people that also ascribe to it so on the Kotoa side I think it was more of an evolution mm-hmm. um, also because I am not technically trained as, as a designer I wouldn't advise anyone to really go down <laughs> with that route to yeah. be honest but um, that was my route so whereas for yoga I did do an intensive one month uh course mm. I didn't really do that on the fashion side so mm. it sort of evolved mm-hmm. but I think the vision of what again I go back to the new year resolutions and I fleshed out the vision of what I wanted to be but not fully the path mm-hmm. on how it's gonna so it's in unfolded mm-hmm. in a very organic way starting with Zero employees, not even one tailor, because I would just sketch the, something on a piece of paper and take it to a tailor. In and sit there for hours until you got what you want. No, you know, if you're going to sit oh, for hours watching somebody, you might as well do it yourself. <laughs> I mean, the whole idea of asking someone to do something is so that you can do something else. Uh-huh. <laughs> So then you could achieve twice as much. (laughs) Otherwise, Uh you've got two people doing one thing. I mean, that is the very opposite of productivity. Uh So, no, um, I never stand over my my tailors or or anyone else really for that matter. I think in the beginning you go over it. You just watch over a bit of it. I think there's anything you do, there has to be trust that I'm going to somebody who knows what they're doing. Communication is very important. Communicate very thoroughly what you do. Hence, I go with a sketch. I'm not... You know, waving my hands. Hey, ni fu na so na kapa west. To ready to yellow so. So no, uh. let's be very clear. Waist so much, mm. so many inches, and I got better and better as mm. this. As you know, you make errors. I said, okay, maybe I wasn't. I realized when something doesn't come back right the way. I realized maybe it's not really also the the tailor's fault. Mm-hmm. Maybe I didn't give them enough guidance. Maybe mm. I wasn't precise enough. Mm. And I think this is how we learn. If every time something goes wrong, you put heap all the blame on the other person, we never learn. Mm-hmm. What went wrong? Go break it down. Go break it down. Which, sorry, before you come in, uh, this is what I wanted to ask. Uh, the the fact that you were not a trained uh, designer or tailor, did, did you think that set you back uh, maybe a couple of years in where you are now? Yes and no. Um, there are pros and cons to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it did set me back that I, you know, there's some mistakes that I made and maybe still making a few of them. The trained guys are looking at me like, what the hell is she doing now? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But some of them are compassionate enough to come in and and tell me. But I've learned a lot. Also, it it gave me, also the positive side, it gave me a freedom. Mm -hmm. I just do things in the way that I think they'll work. So I can have strange ways. I, I... I'm perfecting the art of seamlessness. (laughs) (laughs) In your own right. (laughs) Okay. How many few seams can I put into this garment and make it work? <laughs> okay. I like the zen. Less is more for me. Always less is more. Mm. All right. Um, now, uh, the World Economic Forum predicted in 2014 that it would take until 2095 to achieve the global gender parity. Then one year later in 2015, they estimated that a slowdown in progress meant that the gender gap wouldn't close entirely until 2133. This is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> on on <laughs> Women's Day. <laughs> yeah. Closing the 60% gender gap of uh, economic participation and opportunity worldwide. How can we accelerate 
the the reduction of this of this party i mean do we really need to wait 117 years for everyone to be on the same foot no and you know what we must understand is people get upset you say oh, you're a feminist people think it's a it's a swear word these days i don't know what happens <laughs> yeah. what is feminism feminism really is just saying we're all human beings it's just saying we are equally important and equally you know deserve an equal opportunity that's mm-hmm. all it says it's wh- I, that's why i love one of my mom's slogans is you know sarah longway a lot of people don't know that my parents are married because roy clark not people not many people know that roy clark is He's married, married to, to sarah, sarah longway <laughs> because as tumbukas we don't change the name me and in ya clark whether married or not you uh-huh. know so she's uh, in ya longway one of her slogans is women's rights are human rights mm-hmm. Now, if you've got more than half because usually there are more women than men in pretty much most countries except for I think India or China mm-hmm. where for you know people have been aborting an infanticide so there are more men now which is a huge problem there are more women. Now, if ha- more than half the world's population cannot fulfill their potential, how do you expect a family a country mm-hmm. a continent to progress mm. it's as simple as that we need to start looking at it in those terms so whether i am a man or a woman you know as a family you have to think of it do you not want you want your sister to progress mm-hmm. or as you know we start with our parents do you do you not want your mother to progress as much in her life as your father do you not want your sister to progress as much in her life as your brother do you not want your daughter to progress as much in her life as your son for me that's what it boils down to so for me feminine you know it starts from us you know if we want to look at no the government the policy mm-hmm. no this gen- gender disparity starts in our homes Mhm. Kunyumba. Kunyumba. How do you expect the girl child to have time for homework when she has to draw water and cook everything? And then her brother plus all the time to play and still doesn't do his homework. Mhm. Let's bring it to the home level. Let's not overburden one side because she has boobs and a different thing between her legs. Mhm. Because when it comes to what needs to be done in the home, we the thing which you use in housework what I know ni manja. We mm-hmm. use hands and legs, and we're equally endowed mm-hmm. with hands and, and legs. legs. Mm-hmm. So let's spread the work. You know, I look at it. I think what has happened. I think ur- urbanization hasn't done any favors for, for, for women. Because I, not that I, I'm a townie. I grew up in the in the town. But when I look at the rural situation, I think okay, if the women did and the girls did the drawing of water and the cooking, the guys were herding the cattle and out. You know, they w- they had stuff which was, you you know, they were using their time, so they were not idling. So, but now what has happened is we have moved to town. There's nothing to herd. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no munda that other people are going to. But then the housework is still there. So the women have been overburdened with that, the housework, and the guys have all the free time. And then now you have women going out. So women are working two shifts. You have one shift go office, <laughs> <laughs> and then what better which time you shift come back. And then someone has one shift, and then you expect her. How do you expect this woman to progress when she's tired and she's got two shifts? We have to be practical. Let's bring it to Kutowa. How, how is how is, <laughs> <laughs> how, is Kut, how is Kutowa supporting women in, in, in that sense? How how are you empowering women as as, as you still harness uh, your creative, uh, uh, you know? I think the the bulk of our employees are women. Not that we planned it that way, but mm-hmm. I think we are women. The bulk of our clients are women. I, I think we, we, as a brand, we are helping women feel good about themselves. We're helping women feel confident, you know, giving them that, you know, you are beautiful, just as you are as an African woman. So I think for me, this is how we are helping to empower women. We're giving them that validation mm-hmm. as a woman, as an African. You know, in, in my faith, our leader Daisaku Ikeda declared the 21st century as the century of Africa and the century of women 
Wow. Yeah, so I feel, you know, blessed and honored and feel that obviously I must have a role in this to be African and a woman. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, it's the brand. Not that Kotoa is only for uh, women. We also do have shirts mm -hmm. as well. So we are also for that man who wants to show you know, wants something different, wants to have a touch. I, I'm, I'm African, but then I'm, I, I'm also, I live, I maybe I wear suits, I work, this is my world, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm still African. So that's on the, the product and the ethos side. Mm -hmm. We're giving women that confidence as being a woman and, and, and being African. As a business, we, we employ a number of women, and I think we, we, I try to develop people. I try to look... I find that my best tailors are not the tailors that came to me with the most amazing tailoring skills. Mm -hmm. More and more, I cr recruit for mindset and heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have somebody who's very intelligent. The intelligence put to the wrong use will be the biggest crook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. But you also recruit for your the heart. Mm -hmm. Do they have a heart? Do they have a passion? Mm. for what they do. More so than the skill. More so than the skill. The skill can be very basic. I would rather work with somebody who has the passion and the drive to excel mm -hmm. and is astute enough and maybe at least, and then we train. Those make the vest. Because some of the people who in the past I have employed who are fantastic tailors, sometimes I've found that there's an arrogance. Mm -hmm. they can, I cannot tell them anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is my design. I want it like this. Ah, no. Nezo uh, you know, I want it. I think it should, it should be, be like done this. like that. Yes. Uh, but but, but uh, you, you, you envisioned it and you saw it and so you, you know how it's supposed you are to be. So you are the designer, but you are fighting to, it's an argument to, not an argument, but it's, it's <laughs> you're, like, you're being told that your design is not the one. <laughs> you, there's conflict, you know, and you, so we are not working together. Mm -hmm. We are kind of working against uh, mm -hmm. each other. That's not to say I value input very much from mm -hmm. my stuff. And I, I give a design and I say, okay, this is the way I want it. I'm not saying that I know everything. So that conflict is not saying that I, I say, okay, I think it should be done like that. And then, like, okay, now what do you think? Mm -hmm. So I very much value, you know, the input mm -hmm. so that we can get to, you know, the design. Mm -hmm. And especially before the process. Not that I've, I've said that this is, uh, this is how I'd like my design to be. Mm -hmm. And then by yourself, you've decided that, no, you are wrong. Your mm -hmm. design, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it should actually mm -hmm. be like this. Mm -hmm. So I want to work with learners. Mm -hmm. I want to work with people who are willing to develop. So everyone, and, and so then I'm, I am developing people. Yeah, I am developing people. And I, I do offer um, how I help with, 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 with women or with the, the situation is I realize how much time it takes to prepare meals. And if you have to wake up in the morning and prepare your lunch and your breakfast, it's, you know, so I try to take that stress off my staff. I mm -hmm. provide breakfast and I, and I provide lunch as well so that people, um, as a woman, I understand the time and the effort that goes into some of those things. All right. Um, yeah. Speaking to women, since it is Women's Day, um, you know, you hear stories of women saying, ah, because it's one masapotana, there's always this pulling each other down. Women don't support each other. But what can women do to support the advancement of women in their careers? And, and more specifically, of uh, career women like you, entrepreneurs, mm. that, that, are, that are, you know, uh, trying to, to trailblaze. I, I think, we, again, this goes back to focusing on the... Do we focus on the can or the cut? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of support out there. Okay. Uh, I mean, we had um, the Women's Awards that Karen Nakawala Last was, evening. It was, was doing, and I think that's what she's trying to do mm -hmm. over there. She's, she's trying to support and uplift other women. So we can focus on who is doing it, and when somebody does it, we can appreciate it. When somebody does something, appreciate it. Because when you appreciate something, you, you embolden the other person mm -hmm. to continue in doing that. But if we are going to be very negative and only complain when something doesn't happen, then we we are not really promoting what 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 we want. I think things are definitely changing. Mm. I have I feel so supported. So supported. Okay. By many women. My clients, even 
I had a piece in the newspaper. I get I, I, I read that in the Sunday Post. Yes, yeah, I read that. I'll get SMSs. And even mm. I know after this program, I am going to get some tweets. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get so much support. So I, I see the support. I choose to see the support. Mm-hmm. And I choose to support. Also, if you want to be supported, you know, Buddhism is based on the principle of cause and effect. Mm-hmm. Gandhi, although he's not a Buddhist, but, I, you know, quotes Gandhi. And this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Be the change you want to, to see. Mm-hmm. If you want to be supported, support. support. When you support others, when the time is necessary, when you need support, you'll be surprised how much support comes and from the directions from which it emanates from. That's so true. Wow. I, I, w- I want us to end on, on, on the high of support. And I want to and I want to ask you this. Mm. Do, do you see, because I was reading some uh, very... Uh, uh, disturbing uh, facts about the textile industry in Zambia and, and, and to a large extent uh, Africa. Do you see the support that the textile industry and uh, to, a lot, to, to another extent the fashion industry, uh, do you see the support from the powers that be, the government? I think we, we've got a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. Um, our textile apparel industry essentially collapsed. Mm-hmm. When you know we came into the Third Republic, we had two textile. I think you're aware we had two textile mills. We had Kofiwe and we had Mulungushi. Uh-huh. So you know we were able to grow cotton, spin cotton, and and we. So basically, we produced some of the world's best quality cotton, and we export it, and then we import it back as the fabric as as fabric. But um, yeah, I think long term we can. We can look at what needs to be done to uh-huh. support it. Not that, but I mean, it's it's a global economy. Sometimes it doesn't make sense that everything is done in one country. Uh-huh. But there's various things that we can do. People think of clothes as a very frivolous industry, uh-huh. and um, it's huge. Think about it. You, every one of us, are clothed here. Uh-huh. How many millions of people are uh-huh. there? I don't. There are very few people who are walking around Chintaku. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, even someone who have at least even a kabudula, even uh-huh. a pant on. How many? How now? You multiply that. Even if we are spending ten dollars per person, we are already looking at a hundred and thirty million dollars in a year. So this is how much money we can actually keep in our economy uh-huh. if we could manufacture and if we could. You know, do a lot in-house. Every time you go to Woolworths or you go and buy Made in China, you are you are supporting. It's okay. We can support each other. We're talking about support. Mm-hmm. It's a global village. Right? You're supporting the person who made it and the business in China or South Africa or whatever. So the more you come to Kutoa and buy Zambian oh, yes. or go to the other fashion designers, you are feeding Zambian families. You are feeding the tailors, uh-huh. the sellers the fabric people uh-huh. in uh-huh. the market. So this uh-huh. is what we were talking about, support. support. Uh-huh. How do we support each other, not just as woman to woman, uh-huh. but as Zambians, we need to start thinking in a different way as well. You know, the garment which you're going to pay in Woolworths is not going to be actually too much different than what you're going to spend at Kotoa. Uh-huh. So we also have to think about, and when you buy something for Kotoa, when you buy it in Woolworths, you know, how many thousands of people are actually wearing that same design if you want to distinguish yourself you know i'm very easy to spot yeah Yeah. too easy easy to spot Mm. first of all you just look for that mass of afro (laughs) (laughs) it's probably tawani because i i'm so you know promoting things which are african from my hair and you probably she's wearing some chitenge Uh i'm very easy to spot because most people are in very plain european clothing Uh so even in whatever you want to do if you want to Stand out. If you want to shine and dazzle, you wear local. And you'll be recognized. Sports. Unfortunately, we are out of time, Tawani. It's been (laughs) a pleasure having you in the studio. Very insightful indeed. No, it's been lovely. I hope I've done justice in some small way to your program and to International Women's Day. It's very close to my heart this day. 
very much so indeed thank, thank you. you thank you for uh, tuning into the startup hour to one it's been indeed a very informative and insightful session all More rolled into, into one uh, be sure to catch us again <laughs> next week same time same day as we bring to you more influential business and thought leaders be inspired and remember that the only person responsible for zambia's development is, is you. you so what you're doing what are you doing about it this has been startup hour bringing successful Zambian entrepreneurs, policymakers, and subject experts to share their stories. Startup Hour, in association with Power FM.